this situation is ongoing here I'm going to expose more of the machinations that are being perpetrated presumably as a kind of elimination process or at, at the very least to prevent me from being having a normal active part in society and um, one of the things that happened was I was on a public computer two people in um, an internet place two people a man and a woman respectable looking came and sat down to my right hand side said using a pc they brought a big book with them which was local history and put it very obviously quite near me so i'd see it and they had a, a file as well with them and they went about pointing i couldn't see what they was looking at pointing at the computer screen and they seemed to be discussing a grave and the the person in turn in the grave had my surname and they was kept mentioning my surname obviously that's going to get my attention then the man said to the woman no that's not the one that was 1896 what about this one whereas the woman said my two of my very close relatives names full names and she said the cemetery that they're buried in and then she said the grave plot number. They gathered up, then looked satisfied, gathered up their books, give me a look, like looking down her nose at me, and then exited, left. Upon visiting this close relative's grave, it has a white marble headstone. I found it to be covered in what looked like black soot and there was a very strong smell of patchouli oil. When I wiped the black soot off the white marble headstone, it was jet black and I, I smelled it and it smelled of patchouli oil. It was covered. They'd either empty patchouli oil over the headstone and set it alight or they'd put soot on it and patchouli oil mixed with it. At that moment, about a few minutes later, a car pulled up. The graveyard was empty. And people got out of it. And um, one was a young boy, about 15 or something, maybe a bit younger. And they stood around this nearby grave. No one else there other than them. And I heard the man say, look at... And he, he said the relative that's buried the grave. And... Um, look at your mama's grave he said um, and I just assumed they was talking about this grave that they was stood around um, anyway I did some recording I had a recording because um, you know it's not unusual that I'm followed and harassed so sometimes I like to record things and when I got home and listened to the recordings there was other things there and it was the sort of the same accent and it was weird, you know, like an amplified whisper. It was quite far away, but it sounded like a whisper. And how would it record? How would it pick that up? So I went to this grave that they was all stood around, and he said, look at your mama's grave. And there was no... I went to the lodge and asked, there was no woman buried in that grave that they were stood around. So he wasn't saying to the boy, look at your mama's grave, because it was, there was only a man that was buried in that grave that had recently died, an old man. So... They picked the wrong grave to do that. It was obviously directed at me. Um, and another incident, incidence was that my lock was broken. I had, because my, my home, uh, I'll explain this first, what's been happening is that I had a CCTV installed in my home because it was known to me that it was being invaded, for want of a better word. So I put a very strong lock on and it's a padlock, very strong. And one day I went out and come back and it was um, been tampered with. It had all knife marks and the actual digits. It was a combination had, had been jammed. Somebody had damaged the lock very badly. So I took it to the police station and reported it as an act of vandalism. There was only me and the woman at the front desk there. 
um, in that little cubicle. And what had happened the day before is I'd had some problem with one of my ears and I'd, it had popped, if you like, and blood was coming out of it. I had that, cut long story short, um, something happened with my ear and it was bleeding a bit and I'd gone deaf and things sounded muffled. And I explained to the woman, I said to repeat what she said because I had this problem with my ear and I explained how it had happened. And she said to me, um, OK, and she, she logged the thing and everything. That's the only person I told. I went out on a short trip on public transport. I didn't speak to anybody about my ear. The person I went to visit wasn't in. I came back and I got off the public transport. A young lad that I have seen going into the house I used to live five miles away. Yes, if you listen to the previous stuff I've put on here. His son, I think it's his son, or somebody he knows very well that's there a lot. He came up to me when I got off the public transport and went, my ears popped right at me. I told nobody about that. Only that woman behind the counter at the police station. So either, and I do have strong suspicions on other information received, that they have hacked into the police network phone lines, the local networks, or they have access to it, or the the woman behind the counter was in on it, or something on my person was bugged. I didn't have my phone on, I had the battery out. But that happened. How did... That's one in a million, isn't it? And um, another thing that happened is that the numbers on my front door were unscrewed. And they were swinging. So it sort of screws out. People turning up at night, like scratching my front door gently, letting me know that there's somebody outside there and tapping on it gently. Um, a rat appeared. I've got a very clean second floor flat. There's two big heavy doors downstairs. How would a rat get in here? I don't know. Um, although I do know people have been coming in. So I put the lock on it, yeah? And um, this is absolutely bizarre. I only told two people at a friend's house about this rat. I'd seen it. And I went shopping. I was in the supermarket where um, I would regularly do get harassed. And three girls all in Asian dress with their heads covered about 16, 14. I'd only told this person, I told this, these two people in a house with the windows closed. They walked past and they was doing this like giggling stuff and I looked over at them and then they all crouched down and impersonated mice and started going, <coughs> making mouse noises and like scurrying, like doing with the hands, like claws walking and they all they look ridiculous and they did attract attention and the day before I told people about this rat two people and again in privacy um, and another one of their machinations um, this has led me to put in the lock on my front door I bought a CCTV discreet one and had it in the house obviously I ordered it online which was a mistake because my online is watched and it must be, um, for the information that gets fed back to me. Um, and three times I came in, I was with somebody, I left my house with somebody, I stayed with the person the whole time, came back in my house with this person, it was on the floor. Um, the person said to me, maybe it's just fallen down, get some stronger stuff to put it up with, so I did. And the fourth time I came in, it wasn't just down on the floor, Oh, the third time, I'll tell you what I did. I put talcum powder all around that area so somebody would leave footprints. Um, and what happened with the CCTV is, when I played it back, what happened is it was all black. It was grainy. So it was switched on, but something was making it dark and grainy. And there was horrendous banging, like somebody trying to boot a door down. It picked that up, picked the sound up. I thought, is this what happening when I'm not here? Um, but all the vision was all grainy and black. So it wasn't switched off. It was just covered up with something. And um, on the um, 
fourth occasion, oh yeah, the talcum powder, I came in and it was all trampled down underneath. The CCTV was still on the ceiling, but it's a, it's like a dome thing. The, the, the talcum powder was all flattened, so somebody very tall must have been reaching up to mess with it, set the cover off and get the disc out and do whatever. Um, then the fourth occasion, I came in and I vacked up the talcum powder. <laughs> There's nothing on the CCTV, <clears throat> just the black grainy stuff. And the fourth time, the CCTV had been taken down and moved behind my front door. And I think that was because my friend, because my friend had said to me, maybe it's fallen down. So that was like letting me know that, no, it hasn't fallen down. We're going to move it behind your front door. Um, so that's why I put the lock on my door. And then that's what happened with the lock. Yeah. And another thing, this is unbelievable, but it's true. This is the, the way that you are harassed. Um, I went, this is what happened. I um, was, is it attempted kidnap? And I was walking around. It was about 10.30 at night. It was warm. It was nice. I had been to a friend's. Uh, coming back, I had been walking for about quite a while, I'd say about an hour. And I wasn't far away from home. And I heard this rifle. I, thought, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I know it's a rifle. I heard a rifle before. It was... Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And I thought, oh dear, that's quite close. And I've had death threats and stuff. Um... I went into this compound, I had to climb over and I was sat there. There's nothing else in the compound other than me. I felt quite safe because it had a wall, a brick wall about two foot all the way around it. And it had a fence about four foot all the way around it next to the brick wall. And to top it, it had privet hedges as well. So you have a fence, then you have a brick wall a little two foot brick wall then you have a fence and then behind that you have the hedges so I felt very safe in there and I was getting a bit of peace and um, within 20 minutes of sitting there I, there's this enormous crash 10 feet away from me a car ploughed believe me through the fence 10 feet away from me with a massive amount of force and um, obviously I jumped up and started running away um, on the on what would be my left hand side uh, not the driver uh, next to the driver he jumped out he was an Asian lad about 20 I'd said 20 odd tall he jumped out and he started shouting at me as I was running away in the compound you effing prostitute that's what he was saying over and over again and he was shouting so loud. And he was saying, come here and things. He didn't say, come here. He was, like, ah. he was trying to get my attention. There was nobody else there. Um, I looked back when I was on the... He threw something over the fence. I couldn't see what it was. And when I was on the gate at the back, I thought, I'm not going down the side because down the side, somebody else had got out of the back of the car and they'd run down that side, which would be my right-hand side, yeah? Um, to, to that side of the path where the, there was... I mean, this is all walled off this compound. So I'm not going that way. That's where the gate was. So I went towards the back where there's quite a high fence. And luckily there was a gate with them, like a little hole in it for put, put a lock so I could put my foot in there and get over. While I was on the top of the gate, I saw him throw something over. Didn't know what it was. And I saw the car reverse. What happened is it had ploughed through, not the fence down, not the trees down, but the two foot wall, the axle had got stuck on it. And he had his foot on the boards. It was like, wah, 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 trying to clear this wall where the axle of the car was stuck up so the wheel was elevated. It was So he managed to reverse. I saw this when I was just climbing over the top of the fence. He reversed the car. And then he put his foot down full again to uh, another attempt to get in the compound and clear the wall. Fortunately, the wall did it. It stayed and the axle got stuck again and he had his foot on the boards and he was um, I went and hid in this garden and because obviously they were chasing yeah chasing me I went and hid in this garden 
and um, I left my bag there in the compound and I hid in this garden and then very soon after three scooters, there was three of them, three scooters were going up and down the street as if they were looking for somebody. I went and got my friend and he came with me and we got my bag. When I got my bag, there was a police officer there and the police officer was interviewing somebody who lived opposite the houses. It was about half 11 at night by this point, quarter to 12. And he says, so the car reversed. And he says, yeah, it did. I thought, yeah, well, they've got their statement. I'm not telling mine. I don't, I, you know, it could have been set up for all I know by, by the police. I don't know. I really don't know. Not all the police. I mean, a lot of the police are very, very good. Um, but you do have that, as in anything, that element that you are not integrous. So I um, went back the day after. Oh, I must say, what happened that when we went back to get my bag out of the compound, we wait, me and my friend, we waited till the police had gone. Then we went over and I got my bag. And I showed my friend what had happened and where it happened. And he said, you're lucky to be alive. You were sat there like 10 foot away from that. And there was an L shape where the car had turned off to come into the compound. It, um, the car was left abandoned. It had no number plates on it. They'd been, you could see where they'd been taken off. There was just little bits at the side where they'd cut through it. So it was unmarked, an unmarked car. And on inspection of the thing that was thrown over the fence, it was like a combination between a sleeping bag and a tent. And it was bought like that. It was new, it was brand new. And where the head is, where you'd sit in this sort of sleeping bag come tent, there's like a big hula hoop so you can sit in it and read and stuff, you know, presumably at festivals or whatever. So you had this hula hoop, so the, the, the tent sleeping bag wouldn't be on your face, so you'd have this hula hoop. Obviously, there was three of them. That would have been thrown over. They were going to get in, put the hula hoop. It's like a sack, you know, put it over me. Um, I managed to get away. So that was a kidnapping attempt. Um... Another thing that happened is, um, like I said before, I put the lock on my door. Um, I had a lock on my door, but this was a, you know, one on the, it wasn't just a normal lock, like a, a key, it's a, a padlock. Um, and I got alarms and things as well, which I didn't have before. What happened before I reinforced the security was that I bought some socks, <laughs> not an unusual event, a hiking socks, very expensive. And there was two pairs of them. And uh, cause, um, obviously, you know, I like to go hiking. And um, they was there and I was saving them. They was on sale, but they were still would have been very expensive. Um, and one day I looked for them and they wasn't where I put them. And I mentioned it again in the privacy of, of of someone's home to them that these socks they've vanished i bought them and they've vanished they're still in the packet um and i left my building the lad who came up to me who was from the previous address i recognize him and he said my ears popped he was outside my my flat and he sort of didn't come up to me but he was shouting to somebody else very near me so it came near me and he said, the green coat, I've always wanted a green coat, a green coat. And I have a green coat hung up in my hall. Um, and I thought, oh, let's look through my letterbox. And then I went to this place, had a drink. Within minutes, somebody came in, and the, a large group, they sat behind me. And somebody goes, is that? And they said my name. I looked round. And it was um, all the world lives. And then they said my friend's name, the f his, his full name. He wasn't there. And then socks. And then 13 times they said the word socks and put a sock in it and sock it, sock it to him, put a sock in it, socks. 13 times. And that was the day after or shortly after my socks had gone missing from my flat another thing that happened is the mince pies <laughs> i bought some mince pies and um this is before i increased the security and i do not leave things i hadn't in my bedroom one of the tin foils that had the mince pies in that i'd put in the bin 
had been taken out of the little plastic thing and put on the top of my bedside cabinet and all crumbs were all over there and there was all over the chair in my bedroom. Uh, there's no way, I just don't do that. I'd put the little tinfoil things after I'd eaten the mince pies back in the packet and put the packet away. I <laughs> So it was. I had to clean up and there was also mud on my carpet as well. There was mud upstairs and there was mud on my carpet. Um, and another thing, here we go, a day in the life of. <laughs> Fortunately, only one day, but it's enough, you know. Um, I was, I went in the pub, meeting my friends. This couple were there, they're getting on a bit. Never seen them before. Uh, nobody had in the pub. They just turned up and um, as soon, well, this I'd seen them this week and they tried talking to my friends and then I came in the week after I did absolutely nothing I hadn't even spoke to these people or anything I'd just come into the pub with my bag I'd been out and I'd been somewhere I had a heavy bag and I went and put my bag down my sports bag down on the chair and I said to my friend how are you, are you alright? and started talking to them and the, the couple, they were staring at me and the man just went paranoid to the woman like but staring at me so obviously he was talking about me and I looked at him and then he, he looked back at me and he goes should be in a mental hospital and he looked at the woman now I'd done nothing I just walked into that pub and put my bag down and asked my friends if they were alright <laughs> you know um, there's been a large part of this to either convince me that I am crazy or to make it look like that I mean all these events they're not there to, to give me a happy life, are they? They're there to try and break me. Um, I There's so many things. Another thing that happened is I went in a bar and a man approached me. And he he was just chatting. He said he'd got a girlfriend. And I said, that's fine. I'm not, you know, I've just come in here to socialise. My friends are coming in later. And he said to me, so I'd say things like you look like this birth sign, which I am. And then he said to me, I bet you like going down the graveyard, don't you? I said, what do you mean by that? And he said it was a euphemism for going with other women and he was making a joke. And I've never heard that euphemism. I've never heard that. Have you? No. Going down the graveyard. And if, you, if you've just listened so far, you'll know what happened when I did go down the graveyard and what I discovered there and what was done. So he said that. And then he said to me, do you get people tapping on your door late at night? And I'd had that the past week. And then he said to me, um, if you've listened to the other stuff you'll know that I had a fight with a woman who attacked me in my home and she I didn't mention the full thing but she actually got a knife and tried getting me in the cheek with it it wasn't very sharp she was just teasing me obviously if you want to stab someone you stab someone don't you this was she was just like because she had all of my hair she was just doing it gently like sort of like you know she got me where she wanted me and that was on my police statement and um, this woman said certain things which are very, very particular. And this man said to me, tried to provoke me, to hit him in a joking way. And I said, why do you want me to do that? You're being silly, you're being daft. And then he said, what about if I had a knife? And then I says, get away with you. And then he said this comment that this woman said, which was on my police statement and that was on her police statement. And then he said, out of the blue, dead pet. I goes, what? Then I asked him what his game was. And to come clean. And he told me, it's probably a load of lies, but he said that he was from MI5. And that I was mentally ill. And that I was um, dangerous. <laughs> so... That is when I went to have a pleasant evening out. I was going to meet some friends. 
so I'm not left alone. 